since I'm stuck here in this godforsaken place, I might as well review a movie. It's the least I could do. The movie I came across is called Cybernator, released back in 1991. In the typical B-movie fashion, no doubt it'll have the typical dressings, such as bad writing, bad acting. How do you think I feel? If he were here right now, he'd tell you we were onto something big. Terrible special effects. But that's what makes these movies so fun to watch. You can pretty much get a kick out of them. Now, as you can tell from the title, it's a cyberpunk movie. Well, sort of. You can tell the movie's gonna be good when the main villains are doing poses in between the credits. We open up with a shot of this swanky place as this fine gentleman and his lady enter. <laughs> How about a little drink, Mimsy? Oh man, you gotta be kidding me. Why don't you uh, make yourself comfortable? Okie doke. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, lady, please, put your jacket back on. Turns out he's a senator. Good to see politics has remained the same even in the future. Slimy and corrupt. The lady walks off screen as this guy is ready to get his rocks off. <sighs> oh man, look at that, she's trying to do the worm. Well, attempting to. Come to think of it, she's having a seizure. Wait for me! <sighs> uh, Senator, she's in trouble. This is not the right time to get horny. <laughs> oh crap, her throat was slit. What was with the flailing then? The cybernetic bad guys show up. This one looks like the albino guy from Prometheus. No wait, he looks like the actual albino from Banshee. Just a fragile human. And the damn things break so easy. Oh yeah, humans are like kitchen appliances, they break easily. The senator mentions voting against some secret project, a project that may have created these cyborgs. I voted against Project Cancel. I'm a friend of the cyborg lobby. Looks like your date has expired, Senator. The future is now, old man. Don't despair. We brought a spare. Ah, he makes witty comments. <laughs> I'm sure he's bursting with personality. And then he bites it in the end. <laughs> Filibuster this. We then cut to this club. So in the future, strip clubs have become talent shows. Good to know. Everyone here looks bored, including the dancer. <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me. So, this movie's interpretation of cybernetics is sticking random pieces of plastic on a person's face and giving them sunglasses. The budget constraints are really starting to show. It is here where we meet our main lead, Detective McCord. He looks like Max Payne, only without the cool factor. His partner has to go to the bathroom. Yeah, I'm trying to find the John. Well, we'll use the one downstairs. Is there something else? Take it easy. Wow, the bathroom is so exclusive it needs two bodyguards to guard against the common folk. Well, excuse us for wanting to use one badly. The detective is seeing his girlfriend named Blue. I'm so not kidding. Oh, so it's like the song. He's in love with a stripper. Makes sense. While the dancing's going on, a couple of cybernetic ne'er-do-wellers stroll on in. I'm sure they're here for the show. After the show, she meets up with the detective. Marvel at her acting chops. Hey, Weave. Say hot stuff, you knocked him dead again tonight. Thanks, sugar. Wait a minute, is she talking to us? Either that or she's reading off cue cards. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, McCord is paying for her tuition for school. Don't know which school since the movie never tells us. Yeah, I enjoy it, but my school is still the most important thing. And besides, Brent, no one ever touches me except you, as you know damn well. Hey, it's tough paying tuition on a stripper's salary. Sometimes you gotta get a sugar daddy. I mean, caring companion. So did you notice the two Borgies who came in a little while ago? Wait, what? Borgies? What is that? Is that slang for cyborgs? And he has a problem with them because... It's never really explained why he hates cyborgs. It has nothing to do with the story. I guess he's just an asshole that discriminates against people with cybernetic implants. Well, it turns out his discriminating attitude was correct as the pair proceed upstairs. Oh wow, that was easy. So they prevented an ordinary guy from using their bathroom, but stood there as two armed cyborgs gunned them down. Amazing. They storm into a room and kill this guy. Do a barrel roll. 
Uh, did no one hear the gunshots? Anyway, they start blasting away random folks for no reason at all. Okay, what the hell kind of special effects are these? I think they're supposed to be laser blast effects, but they look like red lines zipping across the scene. The thing is, when fired, you can still hear the ordinary gunshots, as if the movie can't decide if they're laser rifles or ordinary rifles. Well, the lady cyborg is taken out, but oh no, the partner is down, and it looks like he's about to bite it, but he is saved at the last second. We, you okay? Hell no, I'm not okay, I'm bleeding over here. After that, we then immediately cut to these two. I don't know, it just seems so out of place, especially after that fight scene. The two talk about that project that was mentioned before. Hello, exposition dump. I was against that project right from the start. So was Overstreet. That project was mishandled right from the start. He gave his man Peck too much leeway and now it's totally out of control. Well, I guess the director forgot about this scene 17 minutes into the movie and had to shove it in somewhere. As they leave, the two dudes from before show up and kill them. It's a good thing the albino has a big leather trench coat. You never know when it's gonna rain. At the police station, the duo meet up with this coroner about the two dead cyborgs. Well, fellas, if it wasn't for you, I probably wouldn't be home by now. Okay, what the hell kind of accent is that? I'm making mine tougher. This actress is not Indian at all. Makes Mike Myers, the love guru, pretty tamed in comparison. She shows him the two bodies. She had much more humanity than the other. A shot to the throat much there to kill her, disconnecting the link up to the brain. Has more humanity? What does that even mean? These two are specifically built for combat, and they have a high pain tolerance and can withstand any temperature. High pain tolerance, so they can watch any K-pop music video then. Ding -tong. The two head to the office of the army. Oh man, this scene is sure is futuristic. They interview the person in charge of the project, Major Wright. It was a government model with very sophisticated parts. <sighs> All of our soldiers are humans. The army doesn't build robots. Really? I call bullshit. And plot contrivance comes calling as this sciencey dude walks in. Here's the design on the Black Hawk 2000 for the current. Uh, not now, Sam. I'm hmm. What are the chances of this guy showing up again? It's all so subtle, I can't tell. I understand the Marines are experimenting with some cybernetic tanks. Or... Cyber tanks? Oh no! Soldier. I like how he tries to offload the blame onto the Marines. If this was the Air Force, they would be lapping that shit up, going like, Oh, those two killer cyborgs? Yeah, we built them. Man, Army, Marines, they ain't got shit on our tech. Combat killers. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go get some water. My teleportation machine has worked and... Uh... Hey... Hey... What are you doing here? Well, you see, I was testing out my teleportation machine and I happened to end up here. Anyway, what are you doing here? Uh, I'm getting ready to go overseas. Oh, I see, I see. What are you doing now? Well, if you must really know, I'm reviewing this movie called Cybernator. It's your typical sci-fi B-movie. Ooh, can I stick around? Please? What? No, I... 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 Uh... <sighs> fine, fine. As they're leaving, they're being watched by the villainous duo. Meanwhile, that science guy that appeared before catches up to them. There's this uh, alleyway off of Hollywood and Vine. We know the place. Meet me there tonight at 11.45. I'll answer your questions then. Oh yeah, as opposed to the dozens of other alleys in that area. They meet up with their police chief, who is none too pleased about meeting up with the scientists. Forget. What? I said forget it. Cancel the meeting. Do not show up for that, you hear me? 
Uh, Captain, you do realize that, <laughs> well, there are cyborgs running amok killing people, and I'm pretty sure the mayor's been up your ass about it, so you have to realize why this meeting is important, right? Right? Captain, two United States senators have been assassinated. Whoa, overdoing the face expressions, dude. Shit. Just stay away from the army, Lord. You forget about that meeting, you got it? But we all know they're gonna go anyway, so this scene was a waste of time. While the scientist waits, he gets accosted by a pair of upstanding sex entertainment workers. Yeah, well, maybe some other time, thank you. Well, honey, you ain't gonna find a better deal nowhere on this block. That's right, five bucks a night, plus a possibility of catching HIV. Can't get a better deal than that. Let's see, it's dark, he's in an alleyway, he's all by himself. I'm sure nothing bad will happen to him. Oh, would you look at that? Who could have seen this coming? So the scientists get zapped. Uh, I mean, shot. The duo show up shortly after, conveniently enough, though they're too late and another firefight ensues. Unfortunately, the partner gets shot again. The albino gets away and McCord gives chase. Folks, you're about to witness one of the most epic hand-to-hand -hand combat ever seen on film. Durr, I'm intimidating. Oh man, this fight has escalated onto a pickup truck. Here, why don't you call shotgun? Ooh, right in the junk. That's gotta hurt. Away I go. And then he disappears. Why? You had the chance to finish him off. McCord runs back to his partner, but he's pretty much dead. I should have took cover. The albino goes to meet with his boss, and it's here where we learn his name. Report here. Captain Hare, reporting, sir. Captain Hare. As in actual Hare? Or the rabbit? Wow, what an intimidating name. So anyway, Captain Albino reports to this colonel and tells him on how a mere detective held his own against him. I just realized he looks like Danny Trejo. Was that second cop? It's like no other human I've, I've ever gone up against. He killed Ledi. Yeah, he smashed my head through a glass rooftop of a truck. Incredible. I mean, no other professional besides him would have been able to take out those cyborgs, except other professionals and also a well-placed shot. What is it you're saying? What I'm trying to say, sir, is he was good. Yeah, he was good. The way he took that punch to his junk, and the way he landed on the concrete. He's good indeed. Fanny McCord. What are you saying, sir? You, you know this guy? You could say he's like a long-lost relative. Captain Harry. You might say he's like my brother. Foreshadowing. Although it doesn't make any sense, but more on that later. Uh, what the hell is he doing? McCord storms in to give another over-the-top performance. So listen up. First, I'm gonna find those clowns of yours and cancel every one of their fucking asses. That's right, cancel them by making another outrageous hashtag on Twitter. That'll show them. And then he gets kicked out. Scene well spent. In typical cop movie fashion, the police chief gets mad at the main character. You disobeyed that order, didn't you, McCord? You also told me to find the murder. That's... Oh, look, I don't want to hear that, McCord. Come on, chief, you're busting my balls here. Yeah. Fuck your shortage. I quit. You can't quit because you're fired. I want you to go home and get some rest. In a couple days off and you come back and see me. I will give you your new assignment. My what? As of right now, you're off this case. You can't do that to me. I don't know why he's acting surprised since he pretty much threw down his badge. I suspect this scene was filmed out of order. Later that night, say he's got a nice place. <laughs> oh man, looks like grandma's place judging from the furniture. Anyway, he's readying his revolver for something. Okay, lady, what are you wearing? 
What about me? What happens to me if you go off and you get yourself killed? Oh, please stop your bad acting, please. And then they have sexy time with smoke all around them. Uh, hey, I think your house is on fire. Uh, hello? After that, Jesus, look at his chest. God damn. He's got more hair on his chest than Wolverine. The girlfriend wants to tag along because, um, reasons. You realize what you're getting yourself into? Yes. All right, then, let's go. So they break into the army office. I see he's decked out in a black turtleneck sweater, and she has jean shorts and high heels. Perfect. Inside the office, McCord looks through some files. Seems that my pale friend here was uh, a prisoner at Leavenworth prior to picking up some much-needed new parts. Also known as Fort Lost in the Woods. He then discovers the terrible truth. It's not true. It's not possible. Lieutenant Brent C. McCord was stationed at the American Embassy in Beirut. Lieutenant. What? Lieutenant? That means I can't read maps. Cybernetic transformation and memory block authorized by Major Colin Wright. Yeah, that's a twist. He's a cyborg. Although that doesn't make any sense because he doesn't have the same goofy makeup as the other cyborgs. Hey, remember the theory from Blade Runner where it was believed that Deckard was a replicant? I really believe the director wanted to make a Blade Runner type movie, but didn't have the budget nor the writing talent. So they get the hell out of there. Very slowly. Yep, just keep going at that slow pace. No hurry. Oh god, you gotta be kidding. Even after all that, they still get caught. What the hell did you do to him? Yeah, you big meanie. And then Colonel Trejo shows up. Yeah, just like that. And I have to say, he's easily one of the better actors in this movie. I'm sure you're cognizant of the chain of command. I'm a colonel. You a major. That means I could kick your ass six ways to Sunday. This colonel has given this major a direct order which will be obeyed. This man will be in my office in five minutes. With all due respect, sir, as officer in charge of Project Rogue, I take my orders only from General Braddock. Oh, the balls on this guy trying to one up a superior officer. That's grounds for an Article 15. And then he walks off. Hmm. Anyway, they end up back at McCord's grandma's house. Okay, what is he staring at? I think they were trying to do the out of focus wake it up shot, but didn't know how. That's great. He gets an explanation about what happened to him. When that car bomb in Beirut took you out, there wasn't enough of left of you to put together. Well, physically wise, we managed to put you back together. Personality wise, the way you act, it's completely fucked. Okay, so that's it. I'm not a man anymore. I'm just an experiment. Yeah, an experiment who talks and acts in weird expressions. Most of the technology in cyborgs is available in the commercial marketplace. You, on the other hand, are a Blackhawk class. Your cyber mechanics are all internally contained, no external parts. Plus, your speed and agility are several times that of the earlier models. Ooh, Blackhawk class. Okay, what the hell is Blackhawk class? How do you classify that? Oh, that's easy. The first generation cybernetics, what you saw, while functional, are not up to snuff compared to the latest tech. In this case, the Blackhawk class. You're just making this up as the movie goes along, aren't you? No, this is based on science. Real science. Scientifically true. So, McCord is tasked with taking out the cyborgs that's been running amok. Well, what if I don't want to? That's not a request, son. That's an order. You're still in the army. What? Why? Why is he still in it? Wasn't he pronounced dead at the time? Anyway, he wants to see his girlfriend, but only until the mission is over. Where's Blue? I want to see her. You'll see her, McCord, just as soon as we finish our business. I'm not doing nothing until I've seen Blue. I swear, this actor went to the Christopher Walken School of Acting. And then he sees her anyway. So much for until our business is wrapped up. I need a lash out at something. Someone. I feel the same way, Brent. I'm with you. So he pulls out a suitcase full of guns, don't ask, and he's off. So now he's become the Blade Runner. I just realized this character is full of cliches from other movies. He's a renegade cop who's not afraid to die with a seasoned black partner who tries to keep him in line. I'm too old for this shit. 
Said partner who's been killed in action. Ex-military, forced to go on a mission he wants no part of. Photographs? Just photographs. One of the cyborgs is located in this ghetto area. Whoa, um, right. Yeah, lady, just keep clagging those MIDI symbols. I'm sure it makes it super erotic. Cyborg scum, got the passion of a toaster. Oh, snap, sick burn. You gotta have a comeback, right? Some of my best friends are toasters. He was involved with Lieutenant Valeri, who most certainly is a toaster. That word is racist. I don't like it. And then he shoots him. Huh. And nobody reacts. Turns out McCord was there all along. So wait, he could have stopped that guy's death. What an asshole. He uses a tracker thingy, and then he gets heckled by the local bum. Look here, I'll show you something pretty. I got pretty things. Yeah. Wires. Pretty wires. Wires are good. Pretty wires, my precious, my precious. After he screws off, McCord gets jumped, leading to another epic fight. Let's see those cyborg moves. He better check his credit card, because I think he's been overcharged. Well, that was pretty freaking anticlimactic. So now he has to find the lair of the other cyborgs, but where will he search? It could be anywhere and... Oh, really? He just found it like that. Wow, it's totally a bad guy's lair. The paper wrappings on the wall totally sell it. A random goon walks out of the entrance and McCord takes him out with a silent neck break. Ooh, nasty. Ah yes, more scenes of this guy walking slowly through corridors. Could never get enough of those. What the? Look out! It's a Samuroid! Probably an Arasaka class. Oh, I get it. They did a nod to that one scene from Indiana Jones. <laughs> I wish I was watching that movie instead of this one. More goons show up. What the hell is he doing? Zap attack. Unlimited power. Wait, is that a pentagram? And the number 666? My god, they're cyber Satanists. Now they have to be taken out. As our hero enters this room, Captain Albino gets a drop on him and does one of the most stupidest things ever to be witnessed in film. He disregards his revolver and engages him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Why? You had him right there. Just pull the trigger and this movie could be over. But no, he does the honorable thing. You know, I'm disappointed in this. We don't get to see any cool abilities from the supposed Blackhawk class cybernetics. So, that's all it takes to kill him. Pulling out his tube thingies. It's a big weakness right there. What if he was putting on a shirt or it got snagged on something? It could be easily ripped out. So after that, he walks into another room encountering the Colonel. Wow, gets shot at and doesn't flinch. This dude has nerves of steel. You know you've already lost. You might as well come out. He sounds like he smokes eight cartons of cigarettes a day. Oh, you know who he reminds me of? Uncle Frank from Mrs. Doubtfire. I think we have to go to the next level. Latex. Don't you know you're talking to your brother? You're not my brother. Honestly, the whole them being brothers really doesn't go nowhere. It's not confirmed nor denied if they are related. McCord pumps the colonel full of shotgun slugs, but in a surprise twist... <laughs> Oh my god, he's a Terminator. Oh, so they're brothers in a sense that they have the same implants. Wait, that makes even less sense. The Colonel is still ranting on, saying how people are afraid of them. Why do you think we went rogue? McCord, they're afraid of us. McCord has had enough and just impales him. Oh. 
Oh, what? No post-kill quotes? Used to be the tip of the spear, Colonel. Spear me the agony. Let off some steam, Bennett. While all this was going on, these two have been sitting around, chilling out. The Major hears something. Smoke? Is there a ganja party going on? Nope. Turns out our clever cyborg detective broke in and rescued his girl. And the movie ends right there. Well, what can I say? It's a movie that tried to be like Blade Runner. It tried to take itself serious, only for it to fall flat on its face with hilarious results. So, Doctor, you gonna leave now? Well, you see, me teleporting here was pretty much a one-way trip. I have no way of going back. So, you're stuck here. With me. Well, yes, until I gather the necessary resources to build me another teleportation machine. That could take a while, though. <laughs> what? You tolerated me before? I don't see how this is any different. Well, with you going overseas, well, us going overseas now. <laughs>